which was, of course, in the... Uh, and there must have been a problem, too, of you, sort of a famous film star, being in the, in the forces. I mean, did you have any... Well, it was at first, because I, uh, I was drafted, that's what I was, and uh, it was at first, but uh, once I started flying, uh, it got a, it got a little more serious, and then once I got over here in the war, there was no problem because everyone sort of was, all of us were in the same boat, mm. you know, and you didn't worry about a film actor or anything. Mm. It was right. had a job to do, and that was it. Well, you were so pursued by the ladies, were you, in the early days? Well. Uh, <laughs> You speak freely on this program. Aren't you? <laughs> well, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, it was fun being a bachelor. <laughs> what about the, getting back into movies? Because you started with a bang, didn't you? With a marvelous movie made by uh, Frank Capra. It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, how did how did that? I mean, did you want to get back into the movies? Oh, or? I certainly did. Yeah, but I. Uh, it was sort of a, a, a nebulous period uh, in my career because I, I didn't exactly know whether the type of thing that I'd done before, yeah, yeah. whether that would be accepted. And it turned out that it wasn't very accepted. That's, uh, it's a Wonderful Life didn't do very well. Didn't it? And I, the next picture didn't do very well. And it, it was sort of falling back on that on that sort of thing that I'd gotten into, the romantic comedy, and the people didn't want that. Yeah. So uh, let's, but before you go on then, uh, the, the Jimmy, come have a look at the scene then from, <coughs> from Wonderful Life. Yeah. I didn't realize, in fact, that it, it, didn't, it wasn't a commercial success, because it's a, it's a, good, it's a nice little movie, isn't it? But it, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's my favorite picture, and, and uh, uh, Frank Capra's favorite picture. Yeah. so much, my friend. Please go home, Mr. Bailey. This is Christmas Eve. Bailey? Which Bailey? This Mr. George Bailey. <laughs> you said, uh, Jimmy, that that was your favorite movie of all. Mm. Of all the movies you made, that's yeah. still... Remi yeah. Why is that? I don't know, a lot of reasons. I just no noticed that, that scene there. Uh, that scene, I remember when I, when I first read the first draft of the script, and that scene, the, the little prayer, affected me. And when I read it mm. first, when I did it in the movie, it did, and it, it did the same to, to me right now. Mm. Uh, and this is a theory that I've always had, that creating moments in movies, this, I think, is the important thing. Mm. Uh, nobody knows exactly how it happens. Uh, but to, uh, what, what you should do is to prepare yourself as best you can to make these moments happen. Mm. Because in a movie, it's, it's really not so much the performance. It's really not, it, there, there are moments. There are moments, just like, uh, like there, I think. What about playing, because you've played, a, you mentioned one already in Lindbergh, but you've, uh, you've played a couple of other um, people who are real people, haven't you? Is there, as far as you're concerned, um, an actor, is it more difficult to represent no. somebody? It's not. No, I don't think so. No. Not in my, not in my experience. No. 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 
What about the problems of, of, of becoming somebody that you're not and having to do it well? I mean, for instance, I'm thinking now the Glenn Miller story. I mean, mm -hmm. did, you, did you learn how to play trombone, for instance? Well, I, uh, this was a problem, you know, and I was determined to, I was determined to uh, be believable as far as the trombone, because it was very much a part of the character. And a man by the name of Joe Yukel, who had been a musician, an excellent trombone man uh, for years in Hollywood, is still there, actually, and is still uh, playing. He was assigned as my teacher. And he said, it was a big, jolly fellow, and, one, and he said, well, there's no problem here, Jim. Uh, I'm not going, only going to teach you the stuff that you have to do in this picture. I'll teach you to play the trombone. It'll be a wonderful thing for you for the rest of your life because it's a wonderful instrument and uh, you'll like it. So let's start. And after about five days, he came to me. This is Francis Robinson Duff all over again. He, he came to me and said, uh, I, I'm going to have to quit. He said, I, the, 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 the sounds that come out of that horn when you play it ha, ha, are doing things to me. I, I, go, I, I go home and I kick the dog. I, I've had five fights with my wife. I, uh, I overslept this morning. I, 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 uh, I, I'm, I'm in terrible shape. So, uh, we, we solved the problem by plugging up the mouthpiece so that it was impossible for me to make any sound. <laughs> and I learned the breathing, and I learned the positions on the uh, slide. Yes. And uh, actually, I, I did it sort of uh, like cue cards that they use sometimes in, in uh, television, only he would, uh, in, a, in a tune, uh, Joe Yuko would, would put the positions. Yeah. And I learned the, the tremolo of the yeah. thing, and uh, that's the way we worked that. Yeah. Directed by, by Anthony Mann. Anthony Mann. Yeah, somebody who uh, I didn't know, in fact, until you told me when watching the movies, somebody who, of course, directed you on a lot of very fine westerns, yes, particularly, didn't yes. he? Yes. What, what was the, how did you start in westerns, Jimmy? I mean, was there a, a point in your career where. No, I, I, it was a, uh, as I say, we, after the war, uh, the things that I had done before the war just weren't going. I'd gone back to the stage. I'd done the play Harvey. I'd taken Frank Fay's place for uh, several months while he took a vacation. I'd, uh, I wanted to do the movie of it and did get to the, do the movie, although I don't think I was right for it because I was too young. But I. Uh, when I, when I did the movie, they threw in uh, a Western script that had been around for a long time, nobody wanted to do. Uh, and uh, this was a thing called Winchester 73, which got me started in the Western business. And mm -hmm. I, I actually feel that if I hadn't at that point, if I hadn't started uh, and done Westerns, if I hadn't gotten into that part of the business, uh, it would have been, uh, I, would, I don't think I would have made it. Really? No. That's interesting. Do you, you actually like making westerns? <laughs> yes, and I think I, it's much more than that. I hear again, if you talk to John Wayne about it, I, it's, it's much more than, well, what do you like, the westerns or drawing comedies or the uh, melodramas and everything. The western is, is really an original of American films. Th this is ours. Mm. It's just one the unique no contribution. That's right. Mm. The no one else has this. And this, over the years, there have been <clears throat> ups and downs of the interest in Western. I, uh, why this is, I don't know. But I don't, uh, you talk about survivability of the picture business and so on. I don't think th that, uh, I don't think you can lick the, the, the classic Western concept. The John Ford Western. Yeah. Mm.